So we're at the halfway point in this course, so well done. Uh, I want to take a, a minute just to review everything that we've done up to now, what we've learned, and look ahead to the future, see what we're going to cover next. Okay, so at this stage, we've gone through four sessions. We learned about energy expenditure, we learned about the energy systems. In this session, we're going to focus on understanding maximal aerobic fitness. And then after that, we're going to go on to talk about anaerobic threshold, which is also very important. And then we're going to get really practical. We're, we're going to talk about low and high intensity endurance training. We're going to talk about how you train an energy system and periodization and how to develop endurance in mixed martial arts. So we're turning the corner. It's getting more applied now. So hopefully you'll perk your ears up and you'll really get a lot out of this stuff. So this is session five. We're going to focus on understanding the max in maximal aerobic fitness. And let's give you some learning objectives. First thing, I want you to be able to define maximal aerobic fitness. I want you to also understand the concepts and the components in the FIC equation. And then I want you to be able to describe the relationship between VO2 max and performance. And then identify factors that can influence your VO2 max. So here's the outline. We're going to talk about maximal aerobic fitness first. We're going to introduce you then to the FIC equation. We're going to draw relationships between VO2 max and performance, and then talk about all those factors that influence it. So what is maximal aerobic fitness? Well, quite simply, VO2 max is the maximal volume of oxygen that your muscles can consume. And it's often measured in milliliters of oxygen taken up per kilogram of your muscle uh, per minute, or milliliters per kilogram per minute. Sometimes it's also measured in liters per minute as well. Typical values, if you want to know, um, for the average male, it's about 45 milliliters per kilogram per minute. It's a little bit lower in females just because females have a, on generally a smaller muscle mass. If you want to know the higher end here, you're looking at an elite endurance runners of around 96 milliliters per kilogram per minute. So there's something called the Fick equation, and that defines VO2 max. It's like the equation for VO2 max. And this guy named Fick, he came up with it. So VO2 max, we have the V for volume, and then we have the O2 for oxygen, and then max is just the maximal amount. And we have, uh, in one parenthesis, heart rate times stroke volume, and then all of that is multiplied by what's called the AVO2 difference, which just stands for the arteriovenous difference in oxygen content. So the little triangle there, that just means the delta, or it represents change. Uh, and then of course the A is the arterio, and then the V is the venous, and then O2 is, you know that. So let's unpack these terms just a little bit, and let's start with the first term, cardiac output. So cardiac output, it's heart rate multiplied by stroke volume. And what I want you to think about here is cardiac output, it defines the amount of blood that's getting, um, that, that's, that's being pumped from your heart, per minute, let's say. Now, you know what that's gonna be influenced by right off the top. You know it's gonna be partly influenced by how many times your heart beats per minute. So that's one thing that influences cardiac output, your heart rate. The other factor that influences how much blood is pumped from your, from your heart per minute is the amount of blood actually that's pumped out with each beat, with each stroke. And that's called your stroke volume. So that's defined as SV. So in total, if we uh, account for the amount of heart uh, the amount of times that your heart is beating per minute and the amount of blood it's pumping out with each beat, then we have what's called your, your cardiac output. And it's a pretty useful indicator in exercise physiology. So that's one factor. The other factor, it's called your arteriovenous difference in oxygen content. So let's unpack that a little bit. I want you to picture a muscle. The muscle is going to be having oxygenated blood moving to it and then blood moving away from it. The amount of oxygen in the blood before it gets to the muscle, it's going to be pretty high, right? Because muscles use oxygen. So if you could picture that oxygen-rich blood moving towards the muscle, and then what's going to happen? That muscle is going to suck out that oxygen, it's going to use that oxygen. And the blood is going to keep on flowing over the muscle until it gets in the vein, and there's going to be less oxygen in the, in the blood in the vein than there is in the artery. So scientists, physiologists, you can look at that difference. So what you're looking at is the difference in oxygen content between the artery and the vein. And that's simply the AVO2 difference. Now, what's gonna happen when you exercise? What's gonna happen when you train? Well, you're gonna see uh, changes in your cardiac output, and you're not gonna see too many changes in your heart rate when you're exercising. That's pretty much set. But you can see big changes in your stroke volume. You're gonna see your blood 
uh, more blood being pumped out with each beat. So that will increase your cardiac output, which increases oxygen delivery. And then the other side, um, you can see an increase in the AVO2 difference, which means that your muscle is going to be using more oxygen. So you'd expect to see a bigger AVO2 difference. So let's talk about VO2 max and your performance. Let's say that you're performing uh, one six second effort. Now we've, we've shown you this figure before and let's say you took 25 seconds off and you did that 15 times. So six second sprint, 25 seconds off, six second sprint, 25 seconds off. What's going to happen to the amount of oxygen that your muscles is using over the course of those 15 efforts? Well, it's going to just skyrocket. So we've mentioned this before, except I want to add a, a component to this now. Now, what I want you to think about is the actual amount of oxygen that's being used in that 15 in a 15 sprint. So let's say that this is 100% of your VO2 max on that 15 sprint. You've reached your VO2 max. The average male has a VO2 max of around 45 milliliters per kilogram uh, per minute. So that means that the average male, um, they're going to be taking in on that 15th sprint somewhere around here, 45 milliliters per kilogram per minute. Now, if you're well trained, you're able to consume much more oxygen by your muscles. So what you're gonna see here is on this 15 sprint, if you have the average male, they're gonna be taking in somewhere around this level of oxygen, whereas the endurance trained male is gonna be taking in roughly double that oxygen content. So the big question is, who would you rather be? Who is gonna be more efficient? Who is gonna be going faster? Who's gonna be working at a higher pace, do you think, during that 15th effort? Who's going to be going farther during that six seconds? I think that you're going to probably guess correct. It's going to be the person who's endurance trained. So now what factors influence your VO2 max? Now that we know it's going to be associated with performance. Well, your VO2 max is going to be influenced by a whole bunch of different factors. It's going to be influenced by your training, of course. You can nearly double it if you train appropriately, depending upon your sport. It's also going to be influenced by genetics. So the question is, did you pick good parents? But the next question is, how does training increase your VO2 max? What's actually happening when you train? Well, one thing is you're going to increase the oxygen content in your blood. That's because you're going to produce more red blood cells, and that's going to be able to hold on to more oxygen in your blood. The other adaptation with training is you're going to increase delivery of that blood to the muscle. So you're going to be delivering more oxygen-rich blood to the muscle. And another way is you're going to increase oxygen use inside that muscle. So let's give you a picture outlining this whole process here. Now, first we've got the lungs on the top and you're gonna be breathing in oxygen and that's gonna be absorbing in your pulmonary capillary in your blood, basically that's moving over your lungs. Now, that is gonna be absorbed in your blood and it's gonna be pumped all the way around your body through your heart and ultimately it's going to be getting to tissue like muscle and that oxygen is gonna be absorbed inside of that muscle. And as a byproduct of aerobic metabolism, we didn't really talk too much about this, but CO2 will be produced and that will absorb in the blood and then that would move all the way back to the heart where it would ultimately be pumped back to the lungs and then you breathe out CO2. So one of the things that happens with training is that you can increase the number of red blood cells uh, in your blood and they all hold on to oxygen. So training can really increase the number of red blood cells there. It's actually a particular hormone called the reflurpoietin that's produced in your uh, your kidneys and then it acts on your bone marrow to increase red blood cell production. Another adaptation is you're going to increase the volume of oxygen blood that's pumped out of the heart with each beat. That's going to be changes, all sorts of adaptations in your heart which are going to increase your stroke volume. And then as I said before, you're going to increase the number of mitochondria inside your muscle, you're going to increase the size of them, you're going to increase the density of the blood vessels that move over your muscle, and you're going to increase aerobic enzymes. And all of these things have the effect of increasing oxygen use in your muscle. So all of these factors together, they can ultimately increase your VO2 max. So what's the summary here? Well, your VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen that your muscles can use. And it's defined by the Fick equation, which is cardiac output multiplied by the AVO2 difference. Your VO2 max is going to be associated with performance. If you have a high VO2 max, then you'll likely have a higher uh, MMA performance. But your VO2 max is going to be influenced by a couple things. It's going to be influenced by your genetics. It's going to be influenced by the type of training that you do. And we're going to show you how to do the right training here. 
And then it's gonna be influenced by the amount of oxygen in your blood, the delivery of the blood to the muscle, and then oxygen use inside your muscles. So here are some references for further study as we always provide those things. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned a couple things. I hope you made a couple distinctions. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Take care.